What did you just do, Bacon? I made a boo-boo. Did you just spill sand on that brand spanking new gun? It's okay. It'll be fine. Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. It's excellent to have you here as always, and thank you for watching. Today we're continuing with our brush gun series. And for anybody who hasn't seen one of these ones before, this is basically caliber specific testing against different types of brush. There's a whole playlist, I'll have it linked in the description box down below for the ones that we've done already, as well as a synopsis video at the very beginning. So check those out if you're interested. And today we're actually going to be jumping the gun a little bit. The next caliber that you guys wanted to see was 4570, but I'm waiting on the ammunition for that video. So uh, we're gonna jump the gun and go to 35 Remington because I was able to find some 35 Remington ammunition. So this is what 35 Remington looks like. And I am gonna be honest and say that I have absolutely no experience with 35 Remington. Now the gun that we're going to be using is this guy right here. This is a Henry 35 Remington side gate loader. This is a beautiful gun, Henry started adding the side gate loader a couple years ago under extreme market pressure. Now, this is a very beautiful gun because it is in the brass receiver, but that does mean that it is relatively difficult to photograph for you guys. So we're gonna do our best. Actually, now looking at this, this is actually the 3030. So I am mistaken, give me just a second. This is the 35 Remington and the only difference that you can really see outright on these two rifles right now is this one actually has the scope base on it. Both of the rifles have the ability to add a scope base and we actually did the 3030 already. There's a full video out on that, but this gun is relatively the same as far as a full review is concerned. So if you're looking for the features of this particular gun, then I will link you over to the 3030 version of the rifle. Speaking of 3030, this is a 3030 round. This is a 35 Remington round. I think their overall length is equivalent. I'd have to put some mics on it. So this is a rimmed cartridge. This is an unrimmed cartridge. So I would call the 35 Remington a more modern version of the 3030. Now, this cartridge weighs 150 grains. This cartridge weighs 200 grains. So again, at this point in time, I have not ever fired a 35 Remington. So I don't know what this is going to be like. I'm guessing this is going to be just a touch more snappy. It's so hot. Oh, yeah. Oh. <laughs> Yikes. I was kind of not expecting that. <laughs> that said, let's go to the range, guys. And don't forget to leave a comment in the comment section down below on what caliber you guys want to see tested next. All right, Bacon. So uh, you zero this thing, so tell us what we got going on here. We started over here. <laughs> we figured out we were over here by firing this one at 25. Yep. So we adjusted it, landed here, adjusted again, and then we shot this four string. By popular demand, 35 Remington boys and girls, we're going to be shooting a Henry side gate loading, 35 Remington. And I really wanted to find some characteristic ammunition that you normally see for 35 Remington, but all we could find was this Lever Evolution Hornady stuff. So this is 200 grain FTX, which is a terrible bullet, but we're gonna see what happens. I've never fired a 35 Remington before, so that's why I'm doing the first shots. I'm gonna shoot one more before we go down there. Call that a zero effect of ye old shoosts. Yep. I think uh, we're safe to move up to Briars. And in fact, I think we just, we don't even put a new target up. Okay. 35 Remington, Henry, Briars. So, we are hitting a little bit lower than our zero was. First shot, second shot? Correct. Okay, and these were the previous two. Yes. I mean, I'm not saying that this is like super terrible, 
No, and I'm also not seeing any destabilization at all. Yeah, these holes are nice and round, like as opposed to when we shot the 3030, they were kind of keyhole, keyhole pretty bad. So, so let's move to sticks. 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 Looks to me like a tangled mess in here. This is going to take me a second. Shot two. So, first two, second two, this one, and then number six is nowhere to be found. So you know what that means, don't you? We shoot it again. Bring it in close. Okay, guys, we went ahead and moved her into 25. We're gonna shoot her with the uh, with the sticks again. See if we can get a repeat of um, what happened. Behold, going the wrong way down a one-way street. <laughs> that thing is so keyholed. Wow. So, FTX bullets, not immune. Well, I'm surprised that it didn't deform. It's still the shape of a bullet. Which is what we've always seen whenever we shot those, anything with those, is that they're roughly recoverable. Right? So, consistency. Do you know what time it is? Is it tree time? It's tree, tree time. time! Brought tree. to you by the 450 Bushmaster board. Two by four. To simulate shooting through a tree. Because that's exactly the type of inbred crap that happens over there at the 450 Bushmaster board. The 11th commandment. Thou shall not shoot through trees. Give her a spank there, Bacon. That ought to do. Oh yeah, $100 worth of 35 ammo. Oh goodness. <laughs> it's so blurry. So this is like 12 and a half yards. Uh-oh. <laughs> give, give us a second one. I see a bullet hole this time. <laughs> Bacon was saying that he thinks that we ought to discontinue the tree test, and I don't think that that should happen. No, I don't think we should discontinue the tree test. I just think that we should just arrive at the point you can't shoot through a tree. Somebody is going to see this. Somebody's going to see this. And be like, ah, you can do that. Yeah, that's fine. So what have we learned? Well, number one. And I'm, this wasn't even in the original test meeting. The whole tree test was just something that I was like, hey, you know what? I've got an extra two before laying here. Let's go ahead and shoot it. It was never intended to be part of the thing, and it's kind of become part of the series. So take it worth a grain of salt. It was really just me kind of messing around. But I think that it is definitive that if you think that you can shoot through a tree, that you are completely unethical. I don't care what the caliber is. It's, it's not okay to shoot through trees at game animals, period. Moving on from there, <laughs> I think that we can also definitively say that, and I hope that there's going to be an exception to this rule, those twigs that we're shooting are pretty rough on just about everything. And I was hoping by using the FTX bullet that we might have an exception to that rule. The FTX bullet, in my experience, is a terrible bullet. I have shot lots of game with FTX loadings in a variety of calibers, and if you can recover the bullet, generally speaking, you can identify that as an FTX bullet <laughs> after the fact. And in my opinion, that's terrible for uh, performance on game. Now, I don't know what kind of voodoo magic they've got poured into these things. It seems to do sufficient damage to tissue. It just doesn't do it 
by the method that they advertise that it does. It doesn't dump energy. It doesn't dissipate energy by breaking up the projectile into the into the target. So I was hoping that by using it against different brush mediums that we would see that performance carry through. And it turns out that, no, it's it's it doesn't really. It doesn't break up, but it's still very easily deflected by something as small as twig. Stick. 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 So ranking. I'm still putting 12 gauge above both 3030 and 35 Remington. So I'm still saying that it wins. However, depending on what medium you're looking at, I feel like it could go either 35 Remington 3030 or 3030 35 Remington. So I think that if you just go with the twig test, then I think 35 Remington wins. However, I think that it is also very dependent on bullet construction. Again, the FTX bullet is known to not break up. And because of that, I think that we got better performance on the twig test in this go around because of bullet composition. If it was one of those really long, kind of like elephant cartridge looking bullets that were are characteristic of 35 Remington, I'm not sure how that would have performed. Although it's a very long bullet, so it may have acted more like a javelin anyway. So again, I wish that I had access to it. I literally could not buy it, guys. This is the only stuff that I could find. Uh, if you guys are 35 Remington people, I'll probably throw up the, the brass up on the website because I don't actually see myself using this cartridge in the future. Now pick up that brass. It, it, this was literally one of those ones that you guys said that I had to do and I was like, what is 35 Remington? I have never seen this thing before in my entire life and I had to go out and get one specifically for this testing because you guys directed it. Make sure that you leave a comment in the comment section down below on a caliber that you guys wanna see tested in the future and I will do my best to accomplish that. Also, if you don't have a caliber that you wanna see or maybe your caliber's already been covered, then one, pick a second one <laughs> or two, also just consider interacting with the video in some way to help with the algorithm and please consider supporting the uh, VSO Gun channel over on Patreon Subscribestar and you can see people who are doing that on screen right now.